Hey YouTube, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV, back at another video. Hey, I want to drop part two right now to Ravens OTAs, what do fans want to see? Now, uh, we talked about part one before the first round of OTAs. Now, before the second round of OTAs, you know, we're going to do part two. So, I was thinking, and obviously the first thing that came to mind about what, what, what do fans want to see? Not just me, but fans in general. What do we want to see? And uh, Lamar Jackson, right? There are a lot of Ravens fans who are panicking about Lamar Jackson not being there. There's a lot of Ravens fans questioning commitment and and things of that nature. Of why you got to train your QB coach after a couple of days when you could be out there training with your new receivers and getting that time and the rhythm down. Me personally, I'm not one of those guys. All right. I don't believe it's a big deal that he's not there for OTAs. I don't believe it's a big deal if he's not there until June 14th, which is the mandatory mini camp. Now, if he misses that uh, June 14th to June 16th, we'll we'll talk about something else. But as it currently says, I'm not I'm not really putting much stock until he has to be there for OTAs. Um, at this point, he's a vet, five years in. You know, OTAs is not doing much for him. Now, obviously, you could say you always get more time with your receivers and build chemistry. And like I said previously, I do agree with that. You can always get better. But that's what he's doing right now. He's training with his QB coach, getting better. His work ethic should never be questioned. Um, but he is throwing to guys that are not his receivers. So I get, I get this, I get some of the criticism. That the criticism I will understand is the fact that you know he's not he's throwing to guys that's not on a team, right as it currently stands, and he's throwing to guys where it's not going to benefit him, at, quote unquote, because of the season because they're not going to catch the passes from him. Fine. But what I won't say is that he needs to be there to prove leadership. He needs to be there to show that he's committed to this team 100%. I believe he's committed to this team 100 already, and I already believe he's this team's leader. They look up to Lamar Jackson, and and that's that. So, uh, But fans want to see Lamar Jackson OTAs, long story short. So if he's there, for me, if he's there, great. If he's not, I'm not going to whine and complain about it. But fans want to see Lamar Jackson OTAs. All right. Um, next thing I want to see, I want to see these drop passes slowing down. Uh, it seems like every report we've gotten so far, whether it's Ricky Minicamp, first round of OTAs, drops are an issue. Now, obviously, they're, they're getting with their quarterbacks, uh, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers. They all got to build chemistry with the guys that's there. So maybe it's different. The ball's coming differently, things like that. Guys are running around, so maybe they're not in the right spot. All kind of contributing factors can happen to drops. But the main thing is you don't want that ball on the ground uh, through a receiver, tight end, running backs, um, on wheel. You know what I mean? If the defender makes a great play, awesome. Can't do nothing about it. All right. But if it's up to you and the ball goes through your hands, that's an issue. All right. Um, the Ravens can't have this be an issue continuing into the season. Now, look, it's only May. We're months away. So I'm not, like I, like I said in previous videos, we're not hitting the panic button on drop passes, but this is something that I would like to hear has slowed down and is not as prevalent as it was in the previous two camps. All right. So um, I kind of stick with the theme of uh, receivers. I want to hear that these guys are winning their one on one matchups. You know, Ravens have a lot of talented corners. It's a lot of guys out there that's going to give you great competition. Are you beating these guys in practice? All right. The Ravens. Uh, possibly have the best secondary in the NFL. So that means for these this receiving core, they're going against some good, good uh, defenders. They're going against some guys that's going to test them, maybe some more than what they're going to be tested in games. So can Duvernay, Prochet, Tylen Wallace, can they beat these guys? Can they show that they need to line up uh, wide receiver two, wide receiver three on this team? Um, also, I want to keep hearing about undrafted free agent rookie wide receivers, man. Um, so if you watch the Ravens wire, like I mentioned, uh, I mentioned another video, Shamar Bridges and Slade Bolden were two people that were mentioned by name. Do they continue to climb? Do they continue to excel? Do we hear about some of the other guys? Makai Pohl, Devin Williams, uh, Trayvon Clark. Do they, do they show up? So that's interesting about I want to keep hearing more about. Uh, what else? Um, Kyle Hamilton. We want to. I want to hear Kyle Hamilton is continuously making plays, right? Um, I believe that he was a top five 
draft prospect, as most people believe, and he slipped due to speed concerns, which is kind of crazy that we based so much off a 40-yard dash, but that's beside the point. I'm glad he fell to the Ravens. Um, I want to hear that he's continually making plays. Every rookie mini can, first round OTAs, he's been stand out. So continue that. We love to see it. Now, Linderbaum and Travis Jones, I want to see and hear that they're doing the same. Linderbaum is looking good. He's snapping the ball well. He's moving around the field good. Because, you know, doing OTAs, they will do some 11 on 11 drills. So Travis Jones versus Linderbaum is going to be a matchup. So I want to hear Linderbaum's winning some, Travis Jones is winning some. These three rookies, Hamilton, Linderbaum, ha um, sorry, Hamilton, Linderbaum, uh, Travis Jones, excuse me, are three of the most important rookies, I think, to this Ravens season. They're all going to have key, vital, important roles. So I want to say that these guys are ready to step up and ready to play. You know, God, I know Ojabo was the second round pick, but, you know, he's got to come back from that Achilles. And even when he comes back, the Ravens still could slow play him and he cannot really be full force to, you know, we in week eight, nine, ten, potentially. All right. But Hamilton, Linderbaum, Travis Jones, you know, barring injuries, Franklin's Cross, all of that. Um, these are three guys who are going to be key contributors. They're a rookie season for the Ravens. So I want to hear that, that, that they're doing well. Um, Isaiah Likely, another rookie. I think Isaiah Likely, Isaiah Likely could be that fourth rookie that's a key contributor. Um, just because he's a kind of a matchup nightmare. You know, 6'4", 240. But I think he's too big for, you know, corners and safeties to kind of cover him. And I think he's one of those guys that's too fast for a traditional linebacker to cover him. So he's in a good spotlight right there where he's a, he's an instant mismatch. Um, so he steps on the field. Now it's up to Greg Roman to use him in creative ways. Now creativity in the passing game has not always been Greg Roman's strong suit. That's why we got guys like Keith Williams, pass game coordinator, and T. Martin, the wide receivers coach here, to help out with that creativity. So if they can help Roman get creative with likely, he could be the fourth rookie that has a major, major impact on this team. And um, I think there were some issues with drops with him as well. So if we can get that kind of slowed down and subdued by the time training camp and the season comes out, it'd be great. Um, so according to Marlon Humphrey from his last, uh, uh, from his uh, presser a couple days ago, he said that he expects Marcus Williams and Kyle Fuller to be in the building this week for OTAs. Now, that's that's the case. That's great. We get to see these guys in, well, not full uniform. We get to see them in, you know, their Ravens jersey, helmet, and things like that. So we get to see that this secondary is starting to come to shape, come to life. And that's good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. So hopefully that they're there for OTAs. Um, oh, another guy, Brandon Stevens. Uh, he was there last week. Harbaugh mentioned him saying that he's kind of playing all over the field. And he would classify Brandon Stevens right now as more of a cornerback safety instead of a safety cornerback. So... He's going to be mainly focused on playing corner, but he can obviously do some other stuff as well. So I want to see that the versatility that he's show, that he's showcasing can be used effectively. But I don't think we'll be able to see too much of that in OTAs. That's more of a um, game scenarios and training camp and things like that. So, But these are some of the things that I want to see from this second round of OTAs. Hey, let me know in the comments what are some things that you're looking forward to, uh, some highlights that you want to see, some guys you want to hear that's making plays. All right, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.